And a while ago, I received a comment from one of you guys asking me to take you guys through the process of... I got all this stuff here. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rico Richardson and in this episode we're going to recreate a photo that I've made. It's one of my most popular videos. It's been watched 59,000 times. It's how to edit your photos like a professional in Darktable. And a while ago, one of you guys asked me to take you guys through the process of me editing my photos. Uh, how I'm going to approach the photo and what I'm going to do first. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain to you guys as well how I edit the picture and what is going on inside of my head. And the thing I see in this image is that it's got a blue cast, which is pretty logical because the light is hitting from the top on the water and then it's going back up and the sky is blue as well. So you've got some ozone or some haze or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, we need to get rid of the lens distortion over here, but that's something we're going to do later on and we might crop this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it to see if we can change the composition of this image a little bit. So for that, I'm going to use the crop and rotate module. I'm going to activate it. And in this tutorial, what I'm not going to do is put all the modules in my favorites. I'm just going to find them with the search module. So like I said, crop and rotate. So we're going to change the composition of this image and I'm going to use the four by five, which is the Instagram ratio. And I want to make sure that I don't just narrow it down like this because I do want the sky because that automatically gives the image a lot more body. But I want to make sure that this is a little bit in the center as well. So I'm just going to stretch it out. And now we've got the people in the middle. We've got the water on the rules of third. I'm going to double click it. And here we have the image. So we've got a lot of foreground. Then we've got some middle ground and we've got some background. And that's basically what makes a great picture. So you're creating some sort of depth of field because you can definitely tell how the focus is divided in this image. This image was shot with a, let's have a look, image information on a 4.5 aperture. So a lot of stuff in the image is in focus but I think I've put the focus point in here and we can check by hitting control shift F and that shows you what's in focus. And we've got three different colors over here. And the first color is yellow, which means that's very sharp. Then we've got green, which is a little bit less sharp. And then we've got the blue, which is the least sharp in this image. I'm going to deactivate it by hitting control shift F or command on Mac. If you use a Mac, and that's it for the crop and rotate module. So I'm going to close that one down. And, and the first thing I'm going to do with this photo is I'm going to color correct it because you've got two steps in the image processing. You've got the color correction, which is making sure that the exposure is right, the saturation is right, and that the contrast is right, and the white balance if you need to address that. And then on top of that, it's time to start with the creative process and the creative process can be anything. You can use a teal and orange, which is a very favorite look. You can use all kinds of other looks. And for that, you've got a color palette. You've got different ways to address the colors in an image. Usually when you have a certain color palette in mind, you make sure that the clothes of the actors match with the background and the scene and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to one of the videos I made on color grading your image. So if you want to know more about that, click something over here. I think I'll make sure that something drops down over here where you can watch it. So let's continue with this image and let's start with the color correction process. So now we need to work on the basic stuff. So the exposure, contrast and the saturation. And for that, I'm going to use the basic adjustments module. That's the first module I'm going to use. I'm going to put it in my favorites activate it and you see we've got a couple of sliders so we've got the black level the exposure we can compress the highlights uh, change the contrast brightness saturation and vibrance in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll the mouse wheel button away from me to increase the black level and you can do the same with zooming in and out so if you want to zoom in you need to scroll it away from you and if you want to zoom out you need to scroll towards you 
So we've adjusted the black level. I'm going to compress the highlights a little bit, which means that I need to bring up the exposure a little bit again. And I'm not going to work on the contrast, brightness, saturation or vibrance here. I'm going to use the color balance for that. In the middle gray point, that's halfway between black and white and it's usually around 18%. So I'm going to keep that as is as well. So let's close that one down and let's go to the color balance module. I'm going to activate it and I'm going to put it in my favorites. I'm not going to use the presets that come with it, like the options. So let's go to the favorites. Let's click it. So the input saturation is the saturation correction before the color balance. So you can increase it here, decrease it. I'm not going to do that. First, what I want to do is I want to change the contrast. So I'm going to click this color picker and adjust to match a neutral tone. It's going to select the entire image. And now with the contrast slider, I can just increase the contrast of this image. And you see the histogram moving as well. So there's a huge difference to how the image looks. I'm going to put this on 12 because I think that will be enough. And I'm going to increase the saturation of this image by 110%. It still might look a little bit dull, but we're going to address that later on. I'm not going to work with the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. I'm going to keep those as is. What you can do is you can move these sliders. So let's say we want to warm up the highlights a little bit. You can move the hue and then you can increase the saturation and that will even help you uh, change the white balance of the image a little bit. But like I said, in this tutorial, we're not going to address this. So we've changed the saturation, we've changed the contrast and we've addressed the exposure and the black level. So now we've done some color correction. It's time to move on to the next part, which is working on the colors. And I want to make this image pop. So let's close that one down and let's use the color lookup table because that allows you to target specific colors in the image. I'm going to put it in my favorites again. And there's a couple of things I want to do. I want to make sure that the water stands out. I want to make the sky a little bit more blue. So that basically has to match. And I want to get rid of the blue cast here in the mountains as well. So let's start addressing the water. I can pick a color over here and determine if that will be the color of the water, or I can just use this color picker and then it will allow me to select an area. And if I hit shift and click it, you will see that this is the color that is being selected over here. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to add some greens to make it more blue. And maybe that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to decrease it just a little bit. But I do want to increase the lightness of this area as well. So I'm going to move that one up. So you see that if I show you a before and after, the color cast is being casted on the clouds as well. Now, for one thing, that might be great because the light is bouncing off the water back into the clouds. But on the other hand, it might be pretty problematic. So what I want to do is I want to neutralize this color and I want to keep the color of the water. So we need to use masks. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mix between a parametric mask and a drawn mask. So I'm going to use this one, the drawn and parametric mask, and I'm going to use the path tool. So I'm going to draw a path around the water, but instead of going around it, like you see me doing over here, I'm not going to do this. And if I hit the right mouse button, the mask will close, but I'm going to use a path tool and I'm going to click inside of the water because we are going to feather it out a little bit and blur it out a little bit, which means that these final edges will be addressed by the blur and the feathering. So I don't need to go around the entire lake. I can just click inside the lake and still get the same results. So I'm going to speed that one up for you guys. And like I said, hit the right mouse button, close down the mask. And I'm just going to feather it by quite a bit. I'm going to blur it. And if you want to see what this mask is affecting in this image, click this yellow symbol and you see that this is the area being affected. Now you can change the mask capacity so you can narrow it down or make it expand a little bit. And in this case, I want to narrow it down just a little bit because I see some bleeding around the edges. And you can change the contrast as well. So you can change the hardness 
of the mask so in this case i want to put it like this and let's click this symbol again let's click this and now you see that this is the only area being affected let me show you guys before and after so here's a before here's an after and why i use the drawn a parametric mask is because in theory what you can do let me activate this mask again is you can select the darkness or the brightness of the pixels that you want to be affected and you can change the a channel the b channel the c channel and the u channel the u channel allows you to move these sliders around so if you put the sliders all the way over here only the red pixels will be affected and if you put it over here only the blue pixels will be affected and that's a great way to narrow down specific areas that you want to target in your image so if i move this around you see that we probably have some uh, other colors over here that are not being affected right now but if i move this slider all the way over here you see that these areas are being covered again and that's how you can work with the parametric mask. I'm going to do a separate video on this because it will take too long for this video to showcase it. So let's move on and stay tuned for that video. So now that we've addressed the water, I'm going to make sure that we're going to address the sky. I'm going to use a new instance. There we go. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to address the blue in the sky. So for that color picker again, select this area hit shift click it and we are going to brighten up the color again and now we've added the color to the image and due to the fact that this is blue and this is more blue the colors start to look more natural again which is great because it's basically an optical illusion so i want to address the mountains as well because they are a little bit magenta like maybe a little bit blue like as well i want to give them a more natural color so i'm going to use the new instance again and i'm going to use the color picker I'm going to put it over the mountains and i'm going to hit shift click it and i'm going to desaturate it and you start to see that this is starting to look more natural which is awesome and now that we've changed the color cost in the mountains, let me show you guys before and after real quick. So here we have before the color balance and here we have after the color balance and it looks a lot more natural. So I'm going to close down the color lookup table and I want to make this image pop a lot more than it does because it's still a little bit dark. It's, it's way too dark for my taste. And as you can see, it's pretty well exposed. So let's use the tone equalizer module let's activate it and we can use the simple version which is basically uh, favorites which is basically just scrolling the mouse wheel button away from you and then everything starts to light up and these sliders are starting to change and if you hit the shift and you do the same the increments are different and if you hit the control the increments are a lot less than they were before but I'm going to reset it and use the advanced version. And I want to spread out this histogram more evenly over these nine points. So for that, I'm going to use the masking. And let's change the mask exposure compensation to see if we can stretch it out some more. And the contrast compensation as well. And make sure you don't see this clipping over there with the yellow one. So now we've got a lot more points to work with. And if you move your mouse across the image, it will show you where the certain pixels will be. So the sky and the water are more on the right side. And this down here is more in the middle or the right side. And here are the darker pixels as well. So if you change this, make sure that you do it very fluently. If I yank it up like this, you start to see halos and it looks very unnatural. So you need to make sure that it's very smooth. So I'm just going to increase these to see what it does with the image. So now you see that this is starting to light up as well. Maybe we can increase the highlights a little bit. And the image is starting to transform a lot. And what a difference. Because just look at this. We've got the color balance over here. It's very dark. And we've got a blue cast. And the water looks pretty dull. And then after all the other steps it starts to look a lot better. Now let's go back to the color balance one because I do want to change the contrast a little bit. 
So we're going to the color balance one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new instance and I don't want to affect the entire image. So I'm just going to paint over the areas that I want to use. I'm going to increase the brush. There we go with a little bit of feathering and stuff like that. So let's paint over this area and then release it. And let's hit control and click the brush again. And I'm going to make it smaller to make sure that I can address this area as well. Let's click this symbol show and edit mask elements to make sure that we've got a good view on what we're working with. So let's scroll up and let's use the contrast fulcrum first. And now we're going to increase the contrast. And if you do that, only the areas that we've painted over will be affected. So the water is going to stay the same and the sky is going to stay the same as well so that it won't just blow everything up. And once I'm done editing this image creatively, I want to address the noise and I want to sharpen it because you can get noise in the shadows or in the colors and then the sharper module will counteract that what the denoise is doing because it generally makes the image a little bit softer to get rid of those pixels. And then if you use a sharper module afterwards, it will sharpen everything back to normal. And then what we need to do in this image is use the lens correction module because the image hasn't been corrected in that way just yet. And in the beginning we saw a lot of distortion and we saw the vignetting around it. So we haven't addressed that. It seems that way because we've cropped it out, but the effect still hasn't been applied. So we're going to do that right now. So like I said, I'm going to denoise the image. That's the first thing. And I always tend to use the denoise profile because that usually gets a profile. So in this case, it's the ISO 125. And if we go to the image information, you see that the ISO being used with this image is 125. So that matches up pretty well. And to show you guys the effect, I'm going to zoom in. So this looks nice and clean, but if I deactivate it, you see noise in the mountains, you see noise in the sky. So once again, activating it and then boom, now it's gone. But like I said, it's going to become a little bit more soft. So for that, I'm going to use the sharpen module. So I'm going to search that one up, sharpen, I'm going to put that in my favorites. And now let me activate that one. And now we've got some sharper edges again. And to work on the edges, we can use the chromatic aberrations module. So favorites, activate it. That will get rid of the purple fringes around the edges of an image. And then one more thing is the lens correction. Let's do that and let's activate it. And now you see that the distortion is gone and the image looks like it should. And one thing I want to do is I want to compress the highlights a little bit because this is starting to look very weird. So let's go back to the basic adjustments. And let's see what we can do with the sky. If we can change it a little bit to make it seem a little bit more normal, maybe decrease the exposure as well, just to tune it down a little bit because we've already used the tone equalizer module and this looks a lot better and let's go back to the color balance module and let's just increase the output saturation just a little bit to make the entire image more lively and there you go now we've recreated my most popular video in Darktable 3.0 using different modules. There's a lot of way how you can edit this, but I hope you guys like it. If you want to see more of me, click that playlist over there. And if you have subscribed already, there's a button for that over there as well. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!